Hey, yo, what's up guys? Baby Bear 4812 coming at you one more time. Today we're doing uh, another cool problem. Well, I think it's cool. Uh, I think most of them are cool. Not all of them, but most of them. Uh, problem 430, flatten a multi-level doubly linked list. Uh, so in this problem, we're, we're given a doubly linked list, which says in addition to the, the typical next and previous pointers, it could also have a child pointer, which may or may not point to a separate doubly linked list. It says these child lists may have one or more children of their own, excuse me, and so on to produce a multi-level data structure. And we need to flatten it. So what does that look like in an example? Uh, imagine this is a standard linked list kind of from, from one to six, but once we get to node three, we kind of hop along, uh, we notice that it has a child node and, and that pointer, uh, excuse me, the child pointer, the child pointer points to another node, which is node seven, this one down here. And that one's got a, a linked list in and of itself. And then we've got eight. Uh, so, sorry, if you kind of traverse through through that one, you get to eight, you notice that one has a child with nodes 11 and 12, which are their own linked list. After flattening this thing, although you can't really see it, we get this order one, two, three, seven, eight, 11, 12, nine, 10, four, five, six. So what do these numbers mean to us? Well, imagine doing this. Imagine taking, uh, so the order becomes one, two, three, and then we jump down and it goes seven, eight, 11, 12. And then imagine this, this kind of this 11, 12 over here is now, so we go 7, 8, 11, 12. And now onto the end of the 12, we put on this 9 and this 10. So we'd have 1, 2, 3, 7, 8, 11, 12. Then the 9 and the 10 go here. So we have 1, 2, 3, 7, 8, 11, 12, 9, 10. And now this all kind of propagates upwards. And so this 4, which got cut off originally, goes out at the end of the, the 10. So we get 4, 5, 6. Um, so we go from, from this pattern, we kind of go one, two, three, seven, eight, uh, 11, sorry, seven, eight, 11, 12, nine, 10, four, five, six. All right. I hope that makes sense. I think it makes sense. It, it, it's under, like the name suggests, we want to, we want to flatten it into, into one list. We're given the, the node definition here where we've got the standard val, prev, and next properties. And again, we've got child, which will either point to none or it will point to another, another node, which is the kind of the starting node of another list. Uh, so I'll, I'll clear that up just to give us a bit more space. Um, that's about it. That, that's all that there is to it. So they give us a few more details here on, on serialization, but it's nothing nothing to write home about. We're told that we won't have more than 1,000, and their, their values will go up to 10,000. I don't think that changes much for us, but regardless, it's there. We're actually, I know it doesn't change much for us because we're going to go through it the standard way, and, and we're going to think about how we can how we can do this in the most efficient possible manner. So what I've done is I've come up with this fine drawing right over here. This is some of my best work. It really made me question why I always did so poorly in art class. Um, maybe if I drew linked lists, I would have gotten a better mark. Nonetheless, we this is a visual representation of the example we just walked through. And so what I wanted to do was to, to kind of walk through the logic on how we can think about approaching this problem. Uh, let me start off actually by saying that that when I first did it the on my my first time around, I did this one in in linear time, but I did it in a two pass solution, and and I did this uh, recursively, and and what I did was I said, uh, let me let me walk through this list, and as I I once I find a node that's got a, a child, let me make a recursive call, and I'll, I'll make that recursive call and say you know I'll set this child to next now. And um, I'm going to walk through, uh, I'm going to keep doing this until I find the, the, the next node with the child. And then I'll, I'll attach that file, or sorry, that, that node, not the file. And so what my list would look like was I'd, I'd have something like 1, 2, 3, 7, 8, uh, 11, 12. But then what I do is I'd go back and, and walk through from 8 up until 10. So find this 10. So then I'd add the, the 9 and the 10. And then I'd start from the beginning here, 1, 2, 3, 7, 8. Uh, 11, 12, 8, 9, 10, and then go on to 4, 5, 6, meaning that if I kind of did this recursively, I would have to be searching through every element twice to get to the tail of every single list in order to then connect it to the next list. So walk through this whole list to connect it to here, then kind of once this is all connected, walk through it once again to then be able to connect the 10th to the 4. And so if, if your head was going uh, somewhere similar like in terms of recursion and doing this uh, there's a better way to do it I'm, I'm only sharing that because that's how I it's not a fail I think that still would have it would have passed but it, it was a bit more complicated than it needed to be the the approach though in terms of like walking through until we actually find a node with a child that's going to hold water so what we're going to do is we're going to start 
walking through this thing, and we're going to start at the head, and really nothing interesting ever happens unless we find a child node, or rather a node with a child. If we don't find one of those, we're just going to return the head as it is, so we're, we're all good there. Like That's when the fun begins. So let's pretend that I'm, I'm starting a, a walk at, at, at node 1, and then I'll do something like set cur equal to head, and then while cur exists, we, we continue walking. Does this have a child? No, it doesn't. Nothing to write home about. Does this have a child? No, it doesn't. Nothing to write home about. Does this have a child? Okay. Yes, it does. This thing has a, this one has a child over here. So what do we want to do? By flattening it, we are going to want to redirect kind of the, the direction of this next pointer, and we're going to want to move it downwards, meaning my child is going to now become my next. It's going to almost like pivot upwards. So a couple things we're going to need to do. We're going to need to say, let me, let me almost take this next and I'll, I'll make the next pointer go go this way now. I know it kind of looks like child, but bear with me. Um, I'm going to say, well, my child previous now wants to point this. So I'm going to connect these two in like a steady relationship. And then I'm going to scrap. So one thing that I really messed up when I was doing this problem is I never, um, this took me so long to figure out. But you need to also scrap the, the child property. So once I find a child, I want to say, let me reroute my, my next and previous pointers here so that uh, my, my child comes next in line, and then I'll, I'll drop this, this child, um, this child connection. So we're kind of looking like this now. Um, if this was my next pointer at some, or my next node at some point from the node three, it no longer is. I'm going to sever these relationships. I have three relationships that I want to sever, and then I want to redirect my, um, my next and previous pointers respectively. The question becomes though, what do I actually do with this now? Even even before, maybe before I sever these connections, I, I maybe jump the gun there. What do I do with this? Let's keep that, we'll keep that question off to the side. And then once we get through the end of our walkthrough, we'll we'll kind of decide what we can do with that as we're as we're doing this walkthrough, and then we'll see how that how that kind of helps us fill in the entire uh, picture from start to finish. So I think so far we're so good. And so far, actually, our picture is looking how we want it to. We now have one, two, three, seven. Eight. So this is exactly how we want it to start. So I know, I know. That, imagine this down arrow. It's no longer a child. It's it's like a next pointer. We've got one, two, three, uh, seven, eight. But then we get to the eight. So I mean, I'm no longer here. Seven, eight. I get to the eight, and now the eight has a child. So once again, I'm going to repeat the same process. I'm going to kill off this relationship. I'm going to kill off this relationship. So these two are no longer connected. I'm going to make my next point down here. My child's previous now is going to become my current node, the eight, and I'm going to sever this child relationship. We don't have a child anymore. We now have a next and previous. So what does our list look like? We've got one, two, three, seven, eight, eleven, twelve. So we're getting there, right? In the original example, we had one, two, three, one, two, three, seven, eight, eleven, twelve. The issue is now we got this nine, ten, and four, five, six to deal with. We've got nine, ten over here, which is like in in no man's land, and same with this four, five, six. And what are we going to want to do about these? Well, let's think about it this way now. Um, so I found eight, and I've, I've done this connection. I want to keep walking through. My next variable at this point, or my next, uh, my next value is the 11. My next one after that, it's got no child, so I keep going. I get to 12, and I notice at 12, well, I'm at the end of my walk. So whatever list I have now, I'm at the end of it, and I'm, I'm sitting at the tail of this list. So what the hell do I do? Well, in an, in an ideal world, we know that we want our next answer to look like this. I want, I want to get from this 12 to this 9 somehow now. So how do I do that? I'm sitting at 12. I, I've gone to the last item in my tail. I'm not, off the, I'm not off the list yet. I'm at the last item, and I want this item here. Okay. Well, let's say hypothetically I have access to this 9 over here for just one second. What I would ideally like to do is I'd like to say, let me, let me set my, my next pointer this way. My previous pointer this way, so I'm going from 7, 8, 11, 12, 9, and 9 points backwards this way, and then we continue to 10. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 7, 8, 11, 12, 9, 10. All right, this is where we want to be so far, right? 9, 10, and then I was sitting at this 12. I'm done with it. I'm going to keep walking through my list. I'm going to keep walking to 9. I'm going to keep walking to 10. I'm now at the tail of my list. What do I do now? Well. What about this bad boy, right? We wanted this. We, we wanted somehow to keep a reference to this, this four, five, six. 
And so again, in an ideal world, I can kind of point this next this way. I could point this previous here. And now we've got 1, 2, 3, 7, 8, 11, 12, 9, 10. If I was to continue my walk from 10, I go to 10 dot next is 4, 4 dot next is 5, 5 dot next is 6, and now we're at the end and we're done. The main question here is though, there's one kind of assumption that I made, which I haven't clarified how I'm, I'm going to do this yet. Actually, this was fine. Um, is what do I do with these? Well, let's think about it. The first item that I, I dislocated or, or kind of yanked off was this 4, 5, 6. And then what I did was the, the 9, 10. If you think about the order in which we did these in the, the 9, 10, 9, 10 came after the 4, 5, 6. Meaning the last thing that I dislocated or pulled off is the first one I'm going to want to reattach. What data structures does that remind you of? Right? What if we get the stack of these? So what if I said, when I came to this three originally, and I said, I noticed I had a child. Okay, let me say that if I've got something after the three, if I've got a next node, if I do, because I may not, I had one here. Let me take that node, let me take a reference to it in memory and put it in a stack. And let me do this every other time I have a child. So I'm gonna continue my traverse, so I'm gonna get to eight. And when I do this whole business with the, with the 11 and, and changing the child up, what if I took the nine and said, let me now store a reference to the nine over here. Now when I get to the tail of my list, and I get to this 12 eventually, and I got nowhere else to go. Then I realize, okay, I've gotten to the end. I'm sitting at my tail. And now that I'm sitting at my tail, let me check my stock. If I have any items in my stock, pop them off, attach them, and keep going. So we pop it off, we attach, we do this next pre business, we keep going. We walk to the nine, we walk to 10, we're at the end of the list. Check the stack. Do I have anything in the stack? I do. Pop it off. Pop off the four. Attach. Attach. Keep walking. Keep walking. Keep walking. We're at the end. Nothing in the stack. We're done. So the key trick here is to keep walking through the array, to always wait until we're right at the tail. And once we get to the tail, we want to check the stack. Meanwhile, as we're walking through, if we've got a child, we're gonna we're gonna rearrange this relationship, this next pre child business going on. Uh, we're gonna take the we're gonna take what would have been if it's there the the next pointer. We're gonna put it on a stack, and as we keep walking on through, we're gonna start. Once we get to the end, we're gonna pop off the stack until the stack is empty, and that's how we're gonna rebuild and and make this thing flat. So this is how we're gonna do it iteratively. We're gonna do it in in all of n space. We're only hitting every element once. Sorry, all of n time. And hypothetically, in a worst case, I guess this would be O of n space where we could have a list that actually goes straight down. So every item just only has a child and it doesn't have anything else. So we could keep kind of building a stack uh, that way and we'd keep kind of unwinding it. Uh, so linear time, linear space. I hope that made sense. I, I think the code won't be too too difficult to deal with. And yeah, we can, uh, we can figure it out. So at this point, let's pull it up. I'm, I'm pulling up some notes here that I got just because uh, there are a few like moving pieces here. And I'm, I'm kind of starting to realize that it's it's almost better to, sometimes I'll, I'll keep my notes here on the side as I'm, I'm going through the code just so we don't uh, spend time in, in confusion. And yeah, anyways, we'll, we'll see how this walkthrough goes. I hope it's smooth enough. But uh, anyways, we said that we don't need to do any error checking because we're going to have a linked list of at least length one. So what we can do then is we can just begin by uh, stating, or not stating, but, but declaring the, the stack over here. We're gonna create the stack, so just an, any empty stack, and we're gonna start by saying, let's create a pointer called cur, which is gonna to point to the head. And we're gonna use this cur just as our, our walkthrough through the list as, as we would with a, a standard walkthrough. So while cur actually exists, we start walking. If, uh, if cur dot child exists, so really, again, this is where, where things are gonna get fun. If we're pointing at an item and that item has a child, that's where we're gonna to have to do a, a whole bunch of logic. Um, Otherwise, typically, if we don't, we would just say, let's go on to the next item. And, and typically, what we do is we would just say, uh, cur is equal to cur dot, dot next. Um, I'll leave that here for now, but I'm, I'm going to change it just very slightly once we actually build the, build the logic into here. Uh, what I want to do then, I'm, I'm going to undo this a, a bit. And so maybe, maybe we'll start from here. So let's say, imagine that we're, we're sitting at this eight, and then we think about what we're going to need to do in terms of severing these ties putting this onto the stack, and then rearranging um, our relationship with the, with the child. If we have, if our current dot next actually exists, so if we have an item after the eight, because we don't necessarily need to, right? These could not exist, that's, that's perfectly valid. If they are there, uh, we're gonna wanna take 
that item and append it. So crit.next, we're going to want to put it on our stack. And also, once we put it on the stack, we're, we're going to want to sever this, this previous relationship. We're not going to want that anymore. So we're going to say uh, cur.next.previous is equal to none. That previous isn't going to exist anymore. We will then say uh, cur.next is equal to child. And the reason we're going to say that is because we've severed this. I now want to sever this as well and make it point down here. Okay, we're, we're going to kill this one in a second too. Um, what we're going to want to say before we kill it though is we're going to have to reference our child and say cur.child, so the 11, and set its previous up to equal where we are, our cur. So cur.child.prev is equal to cur. That's going to create, again, this relationship right over here. And finally, so we're going to get a weird error if we don't do this, but we want to scrap the child relationship altogether. So we need to kill this off. So we're going to say cur.child is equal to none. Now, let me put a, a bit more space here. Since we've set cur.next to equal child, if I now say cur equals cur.next, that'll, that'll actually jump us straight down um, to this child here. So from the 8, I wouldn't go to the 9 because I've, I've killed this relationship. It, it would actually take me straight to the 11. However, I'm going to elaborate on this logic very slightly, and I'm going to say that we're only going to go here if cur.next actually exists. Otherwise, I'm going to want to break out of this while loop. And here's the reason why. Think about what happens if I make my way down here and eventually I make it to the 12. If I set cur equal to cur.next, I'm going to be out here pointing at nothing. My problem here is going to be then if I want to pull something off the stack, like I want to take the 9 and set it to the tail of my, of my previous list, I'm not going to have any access or reference to the tail because I popped it off. So for that reason, uh, I'm going to say if cur.next exists, let's go there. But if it doesn't, if it doesn't, that must mean that cur is now pointing to my tail. If cur is pointing to my tail, I want to break out of that loop. I want to leave that tail reference where it is so that when I take items off the stack, I can actually reference them to the, the tail of my, of my current list. So that's going to mean that we're going to want to say now while stack. So if there are no items in the stack, by the way, like nothing's going to happen and, and we're good. We're just like, it's fine. None of, we're not going to have any logic here. There have been no children. That's cool. We're going to return the list as it was. And, and maybe I should have done this at the start, but that just means we're going to return head. So the, the head pointer that was originally inputted, I'm not moving that anywhere. I'm not creating any new variables for the head. That reference in memory is still going to be returned. The only thing we're changing is uh, not the items in memory, but where, where the pointers are pointing to within, within memory. So if there is a stack and we jump in, uh, I'm going to say, so we had a cur still exists. Cur is the tail of, of our, our linked list. So imagine this 12 over here. I'm going to want to set my cur.next equal to uh, stack.pop. So whatever's at the top of my stack, I'm going to take it off. And I'm going to say cur.next is going to point there. So we're going to point it this way. That item now, this 9 for instance, is now cur.next. So cur.next, which is again the 9, well, I want to take this 9 and make its previous pointer to the 12, so it's my current value. So cur.next.prev is equal to current. Now that I've done that, we, we have this relationship here, I'm going to want to take, I'm still sitting at this 12, I'm going to want to say, let me walk through, let me keep walking through this list until I get to the end. Okay, None of these items now are going to have a child. We'd already severed every child relationship that could exist. They're not going to have any children, but we still want to walk through the end until we get to the tail and not past the tail. Because once I get to the tail here, I'm going to want to reference from the top of my stack down to this tail over here so I can make this connection. Meaning that I'm going to say while cur and cur.next, so while there's, while this item actually is, is not none, um, although I think actually even just seeing while cur.next should be sufficient here, I can test that out after. Um, so while my item is none and I also have somewhere to go, then I'm going to say cur is equal to cur.next. If I've got nowhere to go, then we're going to stick where we are and we'll attach what we need to uh, from the stack. We'll, we'll pop it off. And I'm going to run this very quickly because that should be it. Uh, child is not defined uh, because that should be cur.child, shouldn't it? See if I did anything else. Should be okay. Cool. All right, so you see it passes like with flying colors this very well. And, and like I said, I, I think that this here is, is redundant. Um, I hope I'm not going to... There you go. All right, so exact same solution, but with a bit less code. And there's like a 30-something percent difference in the uh, in the speed. So, so don't worry about that as long as your, your complexity is where you, where you want it to be. 
Um, so just we can we can do a quick recap of, of how we solve this. Uh, we said that we're going to want to start walking through this list and we're going to pause and think about what to do if we ever hit a child. If we ever hit a child. Um, if we ever hit a node that, or we reach a node that has a, <laughs> a child pointer, I'm sorry. And uh, so if that's the case, we're, we're going to want to think about a few things. We're going to need to add whatever we're cutting off, whatever's after us, our next value to, to the stack um, if it exists. Once it does, once we've added it, we're going to sever these relationships. We're going to recreate the next and previous relationships with, with the child now, and we're going to cut that child relationship off. Rinse and repeat until we get to the end of the list, right? Until we're sitting at the tail. Once we're sitting at the tail, we're going to want to say, let's go to the stack and whatever items we've saved for later, let's bring them back and reattach them, right? Every time we reattach, we'll say, okay, I've attached this extra branch on, and I'm going to walk through the branch until, again, I get to the tail. That's what this piece of code right here is doing. Once I get to the tail, I'm going to go back to the top of my while loop here and say, grab the next item off the stack, pull it down, reconnect those relationships right here, walk through to the end, wait at the tail, rinse and repeat. Once we're done, we return the original head. And that's it, guys. Uh, I hope this made I hope this made sense. I thought it was a pretty neat trick on on how to work, especially with the stack. It wasn't something that I thought of uh, on my first go. So I hope this video helped. If it did, like, comment, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.